In this interview on Documental, I'm speaking with Nick Bush, a realtor here in the DMV area on the home buying process. Nick, thanks so much for coming on. Thanks for having me on. I really appreciate it. Oh, my pleasure. Uh, so this video, I really want you to just go off and explain to viewers what it's like to buy a home because they need to know this information. So uh, take it away. All right. Excuse. First of all, I, I told you a little bit earlier, I have a slight cold. So excuse, excuse the <laughs> voice for today. But, uh, <laughs> no worries, but uh, yeah, so I work with a lot of first time home buyers um, and I work with a lot of people who aren't are renting. And they tell me the reason they're renting is because they can't afford to buy a home. And I find most of the times that they just don't they just don't know the entire price or how easy it is to buy a home. So I'm constantly educating people um, about this topic. So just to, just to get into it a little bit, um, in this area, the DMV area, the the price that people are renting for is is almost directly related to what you could what a mortgage payment would be, right? So if we think about the average one bed, one bath. Um, you know, rental apartment in this area, it's around fifteen to seventeen hundred dollars. You could also find a condo that's one bed, one bath, and you could pay the same or less as a mortgage, right? And so right away we can see how it benefits to own versus buy. Um and so if we think about why people don't do this or like what's the mentality behind just renting versus owning, and usually it is just like old myths that, that don't apply anymore, right? So when our parents were buying properties, when my parents were buying properties, right, 20 years ago, 30 years ago, um, 40 years ago, the way you did it was you put 20% down, you bought that house, you lived in it for 30 years, 20, 30 years, and and then you downsized eventually, right? That was the pro- that was the way people went about it. But now it's different. The average first-time home buyer today is living in their first property for five to seven years. And you no longer have to put 20% down there's a bunch of down payment options, right? So Virginia has a loan called a VHDA loan where you cry early down. DC has a few programs. DC Open Doors is one. Uh, there's a program called HPAP, but now it's, they, they call it NACA now, but most people are familiar with it by the name of HPAP. And then Maryland has uh, its own Maryland mortgage program also. So you could literally buy a home, no catch, with zero money down. Um, today and most first-time home buyers are using FHA loans, which require you put down three and a half percent. So to put a dollar amount to that, um, a three hundred thousand dollar mortgage payment is a, is two is two thousand dollars a month more or less, right? To buy a three hundred thousand dollar house, you need you know ten thousand five hundred dollars to put down to be able to do that. And I know ten thousand dollars isn't a little bit of money, but it's not the 20% that you would have had to put down, you know, 10, 15, 20 years ago. I see. And so going forward, the pre-qualification process is something that you're going to elaborate on. This is something that I think viewers need to get a little more acquainted on. Could you uh, touch upon that more? Yeah. So getting pre-qualified is basically when you talk to a lender, um, you can go into any bank to do this, any private mortgage lender to do this, and um, they'll put you in touch with a lender. And the things you need to do to get pre-qualified is you're going to have to fill out the application, right? It's usually online. And it's going to go over income, assets, debts, things like that. So you're going to put all the student loan debt, all the credit debt. You're going to put um, all the income you make from the various sources you might make it from. And then you're going to have to turn in the w, your W-2s, the last two years' W-2s, um, usually last two months' bank statements and last two pay stubs. And that's, it's as simple as that. The application usually takes about 20 to 25 minutes to complete online. And then the lender just needs those additional documents to verify your income. And of course, they'll run a credit check as well. And from that, they, they pre-qualify you and you get your, you get your budget as to when you can go, um, of what you, how much home you can afford to buy. I see. So I'm guessing there's a lot of nuance here and, and you're giving us uh, a bird's eye view of what this whole process is like. And, and pre-qualification seems like critical to understanding how this works. But after that, what's the next step that a home buyer can expect? Well, the next step, and, and, and it could be the first step, is actually finding a great realtor, right? So a lot of people start their online search at home, right? On Zillow, Realtor.com, all these resources are here for us, Right. And just to touch a little bit more on why being pre-approved is, is important is because you could be looking at a home on Zillow. Most people think that they say, okay, I can afford $2,500 a month 
So I'm going to buy a home where the mortgage payment is $2,500 a month. But it's so nuanced, like you mentioned, that it, it depends on – your home buying power doesn't depend on how much cash you could put down. For example, if we have a waiter that maybe can afford to pay $3,000 a month right, for mortgage, and they're really making $100,000 a year with their tips, but on their, on their taxes, they, uh, they put $25,000. To the lender, they make $25,000. So they're going to qualify for a home that that fits that budget, not what they can actually afford cash. So it's important to get approved for that reason, right? So you're not looking at homes that that are out of your budget or or that are you know aren't something you're really going to be able to buy because you want to have the expectations set exactly where you can buy. But the, but the the second step and and I said it could be the first step is finding a realtor, right? So um, and the reason this is important is 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 two things, right? When you're on Zillow and you're looking at your homes, you don't have a realtor yet, and you click that button that says, I want more information about this home, you're actually calling an agent that is not aso- that is most likely not associated to that property, right? They just pay Zillow for advertising on the website. So when you click that property and you want more information, this agent calls you and they know nothing about the process. I mean, they know nothing about the home. And it's important to get a realtor, one, because your realtor is going to be working with many different, uh, many of the different business people in the transaction. So for example, lender, contractor, home inspector, title company, right? So, and, and everybody knows a realtor. I'm a realtor. Um, and, uh, your realtor usually has a, has a relationship with a, with a mortgage lender. They should have a relationship with many mortgage lenders. And it's important almost to get your referral from, from a good agent because the lender plays so, plays such an important role in, in being able to get under contract on the house. Most listing agents will call a mortgage lender to make sure that the buyers be qualified. So you want you want to you want to find a good realtor because you want to make sure that you're connected with the right person, but also you want to buy, you want to know what the entire home buying process looks like. So again, if you call that if you call that uh, agent on Zillow. And just say, hey, I saw this property. I want to go see it. And they say, they say, hey, cool. Let's see it on Saturday at two p.m. And you go see the property, and the agent gets you to write a contract. And you put a contract on the property, and you're under contract. There's so many things that you haven't discussed yet. Yeah, no, I, I think what you touched upon of choosing the right realtor is, is to me, is, is a critical step in this whole process because I, I want to go with somebody that I trust. And for that reason, it makes sense to go, like for this video, for instance, I trust you. So I, I know that I can get valuable information and then um, I can spread the word about your, your, your services. It, it makes sense to do that because this is such an important investment that you make in your life and you want to go with somebody that is competent uh, and trustworthy. So, Yeah, exactly. And, and you know, just, just to touch on the steps a little bit, um, so it's kind of, it's, it's so nuanced, right? It's so specific to the person, but it, you know, a home inspection is part of the, the home buying process and appraisal and having a strong appraisal contingency is part of the home buying process. Um, and knowing how to negotiate um, during, for the appraisal contingency to happen and the home inspection contingency to happen. Those are very nuanced. And if you just, if you just find somebody online that you haven't met, they haven't gone over the process with you, you could really be left out you know, to dry in a sense. And, you know, you're, you're, you're buying the average sales price in our area is like 450 to 500. And if you're, if you're going to occur basically a $450,000 debt, you want to make sure that the person that's uh, helping you buy that home is, uh, is, is knowledgeable about the market, about the trends, knows the process themselves in and out um, because we're in a competitive market here. Yeah, and, and, and for viewers that are not aware, uh, Nick and I share the same interest in reading and, and, and just having a growth mindset. So uh, we're always looking to expand our knowledge base, and that helps us over-deliver uh, with the people in our lives. So um, no, I really appreciate that. And um, you know, just to close off this interview, uh, if viewers want to contact you, Nick, what's the best way to do that? So they can contact me uh, on Instagram and Facebook. You can follow me there, Nick Bush the Realtor. Uh, Twitter, Nick Bush DMV. And then my email address is uh, nbush at towerhillrealty.com. Perfect. Yeah, we'll put all that information in the description at the bottom of this video. Nick, thank you so much for coming on and explaining this whole process. 
Thanks for having me. Appreciate it. All right. Talk to you soon.